Bibles to 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. And in talking about the next round, really what our theme has been is godliness. And I say godliness. And uh, we've explored that the last few weeks. Have you gotten anything out of that? I've been, I've been feasting on it. I have been feasting on it because godliness is not about God. God is not godly. God is not like God. God is God. Amen. So when it's when God is talking about the mystery of godliness, when the Bible speaks of the mystery of godliness, it's not about Him. It's about you. And here's the mystery. How you could be who you are, wake up in the morning in the bad attitude that you have, and God called you godly. It's a mystery. I don't know how it works. But I know that God said that He created man in His image. Look at your neighbor and say, you look like Jesus to me. Oh, so sweet. Amen. So we're, the mystery of godliness is about us. And so we talked about the things that accompany godliness. Last week we talked about what it's like to be God. And of course, if we're talking about what it's like to be Him, we're talking about what it's like to be us. Amen. We're like Him. Amen. 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 Have I brought, I mean, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride over this bridge until it gets broken. I mean, I want you all to understand that you have a treasure in earthen vessels. God has called you a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If the body of Christ doesn't act like it, we don't become, we don't operate as the body of Christ, what hope does the world have? Christ is the hope of the world. You're the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all are looking for a hole in the sky. God is looking for you all to put your stamp, to put your godliness on the world, to stand up and be the salt and light of the earth. If I got anybody in the room to start to gravitate towards this group today, because you will always be a mess. You will always be in stress. You will always be down and put down and push down when you don't understand that you are like Jesus. Amen. The devil's not about to ride side saddle with me. I done served him an eviction notice. Amen. And I don't care what form your devil takes. It may be the devil with the blue dress on. Maybe your devil's depression. Maybe your your devil is lust. Maybe your de your devil is addiction. You need to serve him notice. You need to. Amen. Because you're like God. You ain't got to put up with that. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, I wouldn't be putting up with that if I were you. No. All right, so today, today is going to be, I'm always interested to see who comes on a day. I feel like God gives me a little bit harder message. And it's interesting, too, that on a day like today, my sermon title, I'll tell you, and this will make sense to you. My sermon title today is Hindrances to Godliness. Everybody say, Hindrances to Godliness. You're like God, but there's some things that hinder you. Amen. Before I even preach, if I got a witness in the room, and say, yeah, there's some things that hinder me from being God. Yeah. Yeah. Like God. God, we know, is forgiven. And when I walk into my, I'm going to say, this is not in, in here. When I walk into my son's room and I see clothes and wet towels on the floor, it hinders my godliness. <laughs> And that's not even a sermon point. I just want to, I want you all to understand that you're godly. You're already, already like God. There's some things that hinder you from being who you really are. Amen. There's that. And so on a day like today, to come in, just to, I, 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 have, I don't have all the music that I needed last night. We had, or yesterday, we had a lovely wedding with, with uh, the Ducey's daughter, Erin. It was a beautiful time. We tore the stage up, put the stage back together. And Brother Kendrick came to prayer because he didn't get the message about no prayer. And I'm glad he did. Because I put the sound system back together, and it wouldn't work. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And I didn't know, I had it put together back right, and it wasn't doing right. So I just turned it off. Brother Kendrick is here, he's my witness. I said, we need to pray for the sound system that's going to work when I turn it back on. So we prayed. And it's setting up some microphone stands and all that. Turn the, the sound system back on, and it was working right. <laughs> it's because the devil and the enemy and even your own self wants to hinder your own godliness. In a service, when we're talking about hindrances to godliness, there'll be things that hinder the service. I, I understand that because the word will always be tried. Whatever word you get, you're going to see 
a trial and a test come to that truth that you get. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, truth will be tested. That's right. And so today when I talk to you about emphasis of godliness, I want you to just listen through the lens of your own life. Open your mind and open your heart and listen to what God is trying to tell you because I guarantee you what he's trying to tell Brock back there won't be the same thing that he's trying to tell Tammy up here. Amen. But the same God is talking to you. Amen. 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 All right, so you have your Bible turned to 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read beginning at verse 1. And before I read, let me just say uh, this is a little commercial. So before I read, I want you to know that in the month of June, everybody said the month of June, we are going to have ministry here at the church on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We may adjust that time a little bit. We may even do like a little food or something. We have found that when you have food, you have folks. We know that Wednesday night is very difficult for those of you that have children, being on the south side of town, if you're in another area. Um, but we want, we want to try this out, at least for the summer, because we know the kids don't necessarily have the schedules that they have during the year. So, everybody say Wednesday night in June. Life Church. There'll be something here for you. Amen. All right, verse 1. Do you have it? Can y'all give me good amens today? So I'm not driving this and not hindered by the preaching. Amen. All right. Number 1. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Keep reading. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this passage. Thank you for this letter that was written to by Peter. But thank you, Lord, that you're, you're writing to us a letter. And you're making us a letter, a, a living epistle, read of all men. I ask, God, that you do a work in our hearts, that you affect godliness God likeness in us. Lord, that we don't walk just as mere mortal men and women, but Lord, we step into the glory and the grace and the power that is in your name that we're partakers of. Lord, that we don't put up with mess, but Lord, we conduct ourselves as you would conduct ourselves, as you are, so are we in the earth. I pray, God, that at Life Church we would. Grasp a hold of the truth that we are indeed the body of Christ. That we have this truth on the inside of us. This truth pervades and invades every, every square inch of our being. Even to the well of our soul. Let it captivate our thoughts. Let it be in the forefront of our minds. Let us always be mindful of these things. And God, we will give you glory and praise. And I pray, Lord, over the hindrances that I'm going to speak about today. God, that they wouldn't hinder any of the people of God in this place. That we'll be aware that we will not be ignorant of the evil one's devices. But Lord, we'll be aware. We'll be on guard. We'll be diligent. We will be vigilant. And God, we will be who you call us to be. It's in Jesus' name I ask. I give you glory and praise for these things being done. Amen. Let all the saints say Amen. Amen. Put your Bibles in your lap just for a minute. Clap those hands and make a noise. Just one more time. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Amen. One more thing I want to tell you before I preach about hindrances is next week is Youth Sunday. 
We're going to have a very special guest speaker. So I want everybody to come. And if you've got teenagers in your life, bring them here. And also, I want I want young people to know there is a youth class that you're welcome to go to. We want to provide something all the way up to age 18. Is this all right? Amen. How many feel like God is blessing us at Life Church? Amen. I really feel that. So, so keep that in mind. How many would like to hear about a hindrance? Just so that you know what it is to be on guard. Amen. Number one. The first hindrance, and this is not an exhaustive list, but at least these things will hinder your godliness, your ability to be like God. Number one is not believing that it's been given you to be like God. Everybody say, not believing will hinder you. And the first scripture that I read says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as His divine power has given to us. Y'all hear that? Has given. Look at your neighbor and say, it's already mine. All things that pertain to life and godliness. This is not high in the sky, by and by. This is not someday my prince will come. This is right here, right now. I already believe I have everything that it takes to be like God. In fact, the truth of the matter is, is before I ever got to the planet, when God created Adam, when he breathed the breath of life in his nostrils, we read the scripture last week when he said, let us make man in our own image. He was already like God. He was put in a garden that he had everything that he had need of. Amen. By reason of the fall, man became alienated from his creator in our own minds. This is what the scripture says. You are alienated. Once alienated where? In your own mind. Because you didn't believe it anymore. Because somebody told you, you weren't like God, you're like the devil. And some of you, and, and because of our ability, everybody say, I have an ability to be bad. Because I'm bad. I'm bad. I couldn't go in. <laughs> we celebrate bad. This is a song called Super Bad. <laughs> and we no longer believe that we already have everything that pertains to life and godliness. Hear me today. Hear me today. Get this in your faith. Realm. Get this in your mind. Get this in the, the part of your being. Believe that you're already like God. And you already have everything it takes to be like God. You're not lacking anything. There's not one more piece to the puzzle to be added. There's not one more thing that God needs to do for you before you will be like Him. He's already done it all. Amen. And somebody says, well, I'm just waiting until I can quit this habit or I'm just waiting until I can get to church before my work schedule doesn't allow me to, to be there. No. No, it's not until then. If you're waiting until then, until then, until then will never come. Amen. Because it's already happened. Amen. Amen. He said there's three groups of people. The people that that are want something to happen. People that make things happen. Right? And the people said it will happen. <laughs> this is that. This is a what happened. It already happened. It happened when Jesus died on the cross and said, It is finished. He's already rent the veil. He's already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. You just need to believe it. Amen. 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 Because you're never say believe it. Amen. So that's the first hindrance, not believe. Number two, the second hindrance to godliness is not knowing. Him. Now we spent all last week talking about what God's like. And I made the, the example of how many have ever met someone and you got a preconceived notion as to how they were, who they were. And then as you got to know them, that really undid everything that you thought when you first got to know them. Amen. And some of us know about God, what we've been taught in our churches and some of our churches, maybe even this one. We've gotten it wrong from time to time. It's quiet. It's Presbyterian Church today. That's all right. I know it's right anyway. It's right, Brother Kinder says, tight but the right. We got it wrong. We said God was this and God, we were misrepresenting who He was. Or, 
We see our parents, and our parents are and should be a great representation as to who God is. Our father, our mother, our provider, the one, especially those of us with small children, that, that we're the only God that they know. Amen. You know, to an aunt, I'm going to look like God to an aunt. Step right out, get it, right? And so we get these images of who God is, and they are not always who He is. But I'm going to tell you, God wants to be known. He wants to be known through His Word. He wants to be known through His power, through His presence. And this is what the Scripture says, that He's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Knowledge. The knowledge of Him. You have everything that you need, but it comes through knowing Him. Amen. I want you to look at your name and say, I know Him. I know him. I know him. I know that he's a forgiver of sins because he's forgiven me. I don't not only know I'm forgiven, I feel forgiven. How many feel forgiven? I know that he is merciful because he had mercy on me. I know that he's a provider because he took care of my needs. He paid my bills last month. I know I work and I earn check. God gave me the knowledge and the power to earn a living. Can I get a witness in this house? How do you know Him? You know that He's a good God. You know that He's a blesser, that He wants to bless you. You know that He's a friend in the midnight hour. You know that He's the one that won't ever turn His back upon you. When everybody else fled and forsake took you, He was right there. You've gotten to know this about Him. And through this knowledge of Him, you receive everything that pertains to life and godliness. How many of you ever seen the movie Elf? Look at y'all looking like y'all sanctified. I know y'all saw the movie Elf, but in the Elf. If you saw it, put a hand up high, be proud. <laughs> this is my favorite part of Elf. But the Elf is in the department store and he finds out he's a little slow. He's a he's he thinks he's an elf, y'all for those of y'all who have seen the movie. And he finds out that in the department store, Santa's gonna be there the next day. Well, he's worked with Santa. And so he gets so excited. He starts telling everybody, I know him. I know him. What would it be like if the people of God were as excited about knowing Jesus that Buddy the Elf was as excited about knowing Santa? I want you to look at your neighbor just like Buddy the Elf. Say, I know him. I know him. I know he's a good God. I know he'll meet your needs. I know that he'll touch you. I know that he's a healer. How many have ever been sick and had God touch you? And know, know that this is who he is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he walked the earth 2,000 years ago and everywhere he went, he was doing good. Then that's who he is today. Amen. And how many witnesses in the house? Amen. Amen. So that not knowing him hinders us. When we think that he's someone... That he's not. We act like that. If we don't know that he's merciful, we think that he is fixing to strike everybody down. I've seen this over and over again. Christians, they get mean. Religion makes folks mean. Relig relationship will sweeten them up. Because when they know God's been good to them and forgiven them, they'll extend that mercy to someone else who doesn't deserve it. You all hear me? They don't deserve it. And we didn't either. That relationship with God makes us that way. But then when people don't really know Him, they, they know things about Him that aren't true, they become that, and it's a hindrance to their own God-likeness. And the Scripture says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I don't want that to be me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So how many want to know Him? Amen. Number three, the third hindrance to godliness is not knowing the promise. This is where I'm going to get a little right, teach you a little bit. The Bible says that we have been given, um, this is what's been given to us, exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of what? The divine nature. You're partakers of the divine nature, and I say this, this is, I want to make this part of our vernacular because I want you to understand that it's not God out there, it's God in here. Amen. God wants to operate in you. 
He did. He wants you to operate like Him. Yes. If Jesus healed the sick, you can heal the sick. Amen. He told us to, right? Yes. So you're partakers of the divine nature, but how? Through these great, exceedingly great and precious promises. So here's the hindrance to godliness. It's not just not knowing Him. It's not knowing what His promise is. It's not knowing His word. And so we come to church on Sunday, hopefully at least Sunday, and we, we get a meal. I hope that you think this is a good meal, not a Burger King wacky pack. <laughs> I hope you feel like you're sitting down to a full course dinner. It's a good idea to take notes, I think, because you can eat on it later. Last week, the Lord, I felt like, gave me a word. I've been eating on it all week, snacking on it. That's how the word is. But let me tell you something. If you only eat one time a week, you won't starve. And a lot of us come in here and spiritually we are skin and bones because we don't know what His Word says. We don't know what He's promised us. We walk in lack. We walk without the money to pay our bills because we don't believe and understand and know that He said He would supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. We haven't learned to stand upon that promise. We, we come in here and we're distraught about our children because they are acting up. If you've ever had a kid act up, just put your hand up and say, I know that's right. And we're distraught about it, but we don't understand that the promises. If you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved and your household. Amen. See, my kids don't even have a choice in it. They're going to heaven. If i got to grab them by their short hair. <laughs> My daughter's got a new saying. She says, short hair don't care. <laughs> They're gone. Because I know the promise. I know what it says. And knowing what God says makes me more like Him. And when you know the promises in the book, when you know the Word, I want you to, I want you to get this today. When you know what God has said, you can rest assured what God has said. You can take it to the bank. He's not ever going back. The Word says that He is a He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will make it good. If God gave you a promise and a recess of your soul, you better wait till you're four days dead before you don't believe that it's coming back. Because God will raise you up to make it come to pass. Amen. So we believe this. I believe this here today. And when you don't know his word, it will hinder you from being like God. Now, this is the hard part because you can't know something like this book, 66 books, actually, with dozens of authors written over the course of a hundred years without putting a little time in. I'm just looking at y'all now for a minute. See, y'all come and you get a meal on Sunday, and I'm happy to prepare it. That's great. It's my privilege. My blessing that I said that if you get your if you eat once a week, you're gonna starve. You're gonna to have to go into your own spiritual refrigerator and make yourself a sandwich once in a while. Amen. If you're having troubles in your life, there is a way to study it out. Look up every scripture on it. Doctor gives you a bad report, find every scripture that God has promised in his word on you. Apply the word. You got a financial need, look up every word of all money. Look upon every word. You know, the Bible says if you bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that he will open the, we sang this, that they open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there's not room to receive. I believe this promise. I believe this is going to to devour for God's sake. I don't even have to say. This is my word to the devil. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand of God. I don't even have to deal with you. God said he'd rebuke you. I know the Word. Our kids need to know the Word. It's our responsibility as parents to, to put this in them. And guess what? You all have the ability and the responsibility to be like God and to share His Word to those that are around you. Now please, 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 please don't do it in a way that turns people off instead of one. Amen. 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 You know somebody that's living together, they're not married. So you want to share with them what the word says. God will give you entrance into someone's life to speak to them in the ways that they need to hear. 
Amen. Amen. Don't ever come across as judgmental and condemning because that's not him. You've got to know him. And, know, and the Bible says the, word, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You've got to have a, not just the Word, you have to have a revelation on the Word. Amen. That's why it's so important. And this is where a lot of ministries, you know, even we can mess up personally, we can mess up. We don't understand that God has given us His Word, but we also have to have an understanding and comprehension of what His Spirit and what His power is saying to us. It says what it says, it means what it says, but it also has more than one meaning. It's a two-edged sword. Amen. Amen. Do you all believe this about the Word of the Lord today? Amen. So, not knowing His promises is a hindrance. I've only got two more. Can you listen fast? The fourth hindrance is kind of where I won't go today because I think this is probably the biggest hindrance to my own godliness and to your own godliness. Number four, fourth hindrance to godliness is not escaping. I'm just going to say that and let it sink in for a second. Not escaping. Woo! Look at your say escape. Out, go on, take me away. So the scripture says that we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. And I'm not judging you because I was at a bad concert the other night, and the same thing happened to me. My phone went off, and my family was looking at me, and I was trying to get it off, and I couldn't press the right button. It's okay. When y'all get this today, the corruption that is in the world is through lust. The Bible says all that is in the world is the, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Right? So when I talk about lust, I'm not just talking about dirty magazines. I want y'all to get past that. We've got to open our minds to understand it. It includes that. It does include it, but it's not just that. It's not just somebody getting with somebody else they're along with. It's about everything that is wrong with the world, the lies, the deception. It all has to do with the lust of the eye. Somebody wanting something that doesn't belong to them. Somebody wanting something their flesh wants, but God does it's not good for them. And for, for somebody here, it, it might be the Big Mac. For somebody here, it could be the Dirty Magazine. Whatever it is for you, it's all pertinent to you. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, God is trying to tell you something and be something. And I got three fingers coming back. One, one out. So I'm talking to myself today. But the Bible says that your protectors of the divine nature haven't escaped. The corruption that is in the world through lust. The Bible says that he will not allow you to be tempted above that which you can bear, but will also provide a way of escape. 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 This is why we're hindered in our godliness. We don't escape. We yield to it. This is the biggest hindrance. God calls me like him. But this the temptation comes along. And instead of escaping that temptation, I just grab its hand and walk with it over. Now, I mean, know anybody walking with the devil? It is. Anybody who's had a debilitating, life controlling situation in your life addiction, you understand what I'm saying. Though that friend will call, that phone will ring. That situation will come up. And it's your opportunity to either succumb to it or escape from it. Man. Escape gives you the ability to be like God. Because God not designed you to just allow those temptations to roll over you to live in that. In fact, the scripture says that God does not tempt man. God is not tempted and he doesn't tempt you. Tempted. You're tempted when you're drawn away of your own self. So it's our own escape. Okay, so I, I've laid this out here. I've talked about this, not escaping the independence. When you're running from something, 
right down with my bicycle job. When you're running from something, you've got to be running to something. Amen. Oh, I always say this all day, oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. There's always a place to go with God. There's always somebody that you can go to. Somebody's trying to do it alone here today. And you can't be like God on your own. God has got somebody for you. He's got something for you. He's got a word for you. He's got something. You're escaping something from something, but you're escaping to something. Amen. Amen. The whole idea of escape is your trouble. Uh, how many have ever seen Escape from Alcatraz? Bad place to be. Some of us are in our own spiritual Alcatraz. And it could be the hardest thing to get out. Maybe no one's ever done it, but there's a first time for everything. And if you want to be like God, you're going to have to escape. And you need to understand this. Hear me today. What you're in, that Alcatraz that you're in, if you escape from it, it's not like you're going to be jumping from the frying pan into the fire. You're running into his arms. We're going from this world that is corrupt through lust to a world and to a kingdom not made by hands. I believe that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the meek shall inherit the earth. How many believe it all belongs to you? How many are not looking for it to go down, but you're looking for it to come up because God is in you and you're here. But we have to escape. We have to escape. And, and let me just say this one more thing about escape. It can apply to the temptation when it comes to you at any given time. Because we're all prone to be tempted. How many people that have it away? Amen. Amen. Somebody is tempted on a daily basis just to put your Holy Ghost down and cut somebody out. You know how you're tempted. There's a way of escape. God said, how many believe this? If he said he provide a way of escape, it's there. You've got to look for it. Clint Eastwood never would have gotten out of Alcatraz if he hadn't been looking for the way of escape. Right? Maximum security. You can still get out. But here's the thing. Is there is not just escape from when you are absolutely in the the belly of temptation and the belly of Alcatraz, there's daily escape. There's daily escape into the presence of God where you just sit down and you let God wash over you. You just sit down and talk to Jesus for a minute. Start your day off. Maybe it's in your car. Maybe as you're escaping your house, going to your job, you can escape in the Spirit to run into His arms. Maybe your escape is a weekly uh, weekly Respite into the house of the Lord where you just come in and surrender, remember yourself to the Lord. It's to aid you in your God likeness, being like God. This is an escape for somebody. Somebody is escaping the hell of their world by coming into the presence of God. Do you see how it's so important, choir? Do you see how it's so important for us to invoke the presence of God because somebody is running away from something? They've got to have something to run to. So daily, weekly, some of you all have a job that stressed you out to no end. Escape it and take a vacation. I'll even let you miss church. <laughs> it's about taking care of this. And sometimes, let me say sometimes you've got to run. Sometimes you've got to run. Amen. Amen. Number five, the fifth hindrance to godliness is simply this, not being diligent. There's a little crowd here today, <laughs> so I'm preaching to the choir. I believe you all are here in your diligence to tend to the things of the Lord, the house of God, giving and worshiping and serving and loving one another. But how many just flat out would be honest and say, sometimes you just get tired. Sometimes you just don't feel like doing it anymore. And every time you stop, you just delay your own destiny. Because the Bible says that if you seek Him with all your heart, that He rewards those that seek Him diligently. 
Amen. He's the reward of those that seek Him diligently. And the scripture says, to, for this very reason, give it all diligence. Everyone say all diligence. Add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. It ends up in love. Everybody say, say, it, say it all ends up in love. So, because if you do these things, if these things are yours in the value, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then skip it down to verse 10. It says, Therefore, brethren, even more, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Everybody say it again, diligence. Here's the problem with starts and stops. Here's the problem with us in the kingdom of God. We start off. We make a decision. And it all begins with the decision. There's nothing wrong with the decision. There's everything right with the decision. I believe in making decisions for Christ. How many are in the room with me? But if it stays at the decision point and doesn't move anywhere past that, then what we have is someone who's made a decision for Christ but hasn't been converted. And God is not looking for people to just say yes. He's looking for people to be like Him. To be godly. To be the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So that's what we're looking for here at Life Church. We're looking for converts. Everybody say, I'm a convert. I'm a convert. I'm being converted. I'm being changed. But I, look, you don't have to do anything for your salvation because Jesus paid it all. Amen. This, is a, this is a principle. This is the doctrinal statement. Salvation is is by grace through faith. Amen. You don't have to do anything to get saved, to be saved. In fact, get saved is not even, that's not even really a scripture term saved is, but getting saved is something he did. Getting saved. We acknowledge it, we believe it, we access it through faith. Amen? Amen. I don't have to do anything to get saved. Just, he did it. But I've got to participate in my conversion. He's not going to change me if I don't come. I've got to add diligence. And that's why the scripture says to work out your own soul salvation with what? Fear and trembling. This is a quiet sermon today. It's kind of alright. I'm, I'm okay with this because I hope that you're just getting something out of this. Getting something out of this. You are like God and there's some things that hinder your God. And one of the things that hinder it is just not being diligent. Just not taking care of it. Just not doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Just not being who you're supposed to be consistently. That says, it says with all diligence, add to your virtue faith. With all diligence, we're adding these things. We're adding perseverance. We're adding self-control. I, I know somebody, and he stands right here behind this pulpit, and sometimes he doesn't have a whole lot of self-control. It's an add-on. Amen. How many ever? How, how many have ever bought a car? And I bought a car that didn't have cruise control. They had to add it on. Well, let me tell you that perseverance, self-control, virtue. Brotherly kindness. Y'all, quiet today because I guess I'm just wrecking the John. Wrecking ball and they're coming like church today. Brotherly kindness is a hell. It doesn't always come factory direct. But you have to add it with all diligence. You have to do it. Everybody say, Jesus paid it all. But you've got to go pick it up. you got to get it. you got to add it on. With all diligence. And it's the last scripture that I read. It says, For if you, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. I don't say this to you that you ever fear and tremble about losing your eternal estate. This is not about that. This is not about scaring you over the edge of the abyss, uh, dangling you over the flames so that you feel like if you don't do what I'm saying, God's going to get you. I've moved so far from that. I, can I get a witness in the house? You know I, that, that is not me. I'm, scared. I'm not trying to scare anybody. What I'm trying to do is get you to understand that you are like God, but for, but for you to really be like God, you have to add a little work to it. 
That's why I sing not well, I might add. Before I preach, I'm working on a building. Amen. I'm working on this. I'm not there. Be patient with me. God's not through with me yet, but guess what? I'm not through with me yet. Amen. I'm not exactly the me I want to be. And I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that God accepts me and loves me anyway. And He does everybody else that's in the room. And he, does, he loves every other sinner that would come to this house. I, I have felt like uh, putting a sign out saying that that just may sound like self-righteous. Sinners are welcome here. If they weren't welcome here, I couldn't even come. Because I'm still working on me. Have I got a witness in the room? But just because I sin doesn't mean that's who I am. It's not who I am. Just because I can't be bad and I have been bad doesn't mean I'm bad. I'm like him. I made in this like this. The more I believe it, the more I know what his word says, amen, the more I know him, the more I escape from the temptation that tries to easily beset me, the sin that easily besets me, the more I do that and the more I'm just saying, I'm going to keep working on it. Somebody here messed up this week. You bow your heads and your hearts will be just a moment. Somebody feels like you've just blown it. And you did. But in the same way we sang sunrise, I'm going to praise His name. Sunset, I'm going to praise His name. You've got a brand new day and a brand new mercy. His mercies are new every morning. You've got a brand new opportunity to be like Jesus. And maybe... You feel like you've blown it in front of somebody. You flat out ruin your witness. Ruin what you could ever do to affect. God gives you space to change it all. To make it new. God gives you the ability to rewrite your future. If you're created in the image of God and He created the heavens and the earth, then that means He created the world and everything in it. You get the ability. You have the ability to create your own world. You want a world of consternation? You want a world of always a uh, hamster wheel, always going through the same processes, always going through the same problems, always having the same tears, the same trials? Do you want that? Or do you want to say, no, I want to be like God. I would want to go to the next realm. And these hindrances, I understand what they are, and I'm going to do something about them. Lord, right now, I pray over your people and every roadblock that has been set up before them, everything, Lord, that has been a hindrance to them, or whether it's all five things or one thing in particular for the hearts that sit on these seats, I ask God that you help us. God, we believe and we know that you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Lord, we believe that all we have to do is call upon your name, and you will hear, you will answer. I'm asking God that you deliver, that you break every chain in your name, Lord, today, and that you indeed, Lord, make us like you. Make us like you. Jesus.